good afternoon i want to thank all of you for joining this important lecture demonstration i mentioned that you would save thousands of rupees and in fact the convenience you would get out of this is uh, priceless i'm going to demonstrate that okay so i'll get started with the slides so i have uh, in fact named this uh, talk itself scilab code for 65000 solved examples of science and engineering textbooks in fact this uh, project is scilab textbook companion and we are uh, delivering this through the pandit madan mohan malviya national mission on teachers and teaching this project has been coordinated by fasi the textbook companion and there are many other interesting things we will talk about in fact you will also see some of the team members of the spoken tutorial project so let me go to the outline so this is the way i'm going to conduct this session i'm going to explain why we need to use scilab and then scilab textbook companion i plan to devote quite a bit of time on this topic this is the one that has 65000 examples already coded in scilab already available to you and then uh, we have a very exciting activity called lab migration i want to talk about that also scilab toolboxes the ongoing work at iit bombay in collaboration with students from across the country in fact this scilab textbook companion has been done uh, with the help of more than 1000 students and faculty members from colleges such as yours then i want to talk about forum for discussions this is the way we will uh, take forward after today's meeting people have asked questions how do we remain in touch what happens if we have a question will somebody be able to answer the answer is yes they will be able to answer we will be able to answer and that will be through the forum that i will show later how to use scilab for example after doing all this somebody could say hey you know all this is fine but how do i get started with scilab i'm going to talk about that that's where i will actually talk about our spoken tutorial team also we have trained more than 2 lakh students and faculty members on the use of scilab the same method can be made available to all of you in case you have difficulty in getting started with scilab there are of course there are some experts amongst you and they can contribute a lot more in fact some of you are so good that you can teach a lot of things to us so you are i mean uh, we would really invite you to become our partner and even to lead this lead some of the activities so i'm going to talk about that also towards the end of this presentation so let's get started with why scilab the main thing is free and open source software you can have it running on uh, your uh, uh, eyeball laptop if you want you can have it running on any machine um, in fact later on i'm going to show scilab running on the cloud which you can make available through your iphone if you want your android phone if you want any smartphone for that matter you can do it through uh, any tablet you can do this while traveling and so on all that is possible because scilab is open source we can make this available to you it's available absolutely free of cost commercial licenses imply that students have access to them only when they are in the college what happens when they go home what happens when they go to the hostel do they have access to it and it is always a problem if it is scilab then you, they have unlimited license you can have any number of copies and use them legally not only in academia but also in industry because some of you could be consulting for some companies uh, an industry friend might have given you a small project the the licensing that you have for commercial software typically restrict you to academic activity uh, by the way helping an industry is not considered an academic activity and typically commercial software license would cost 100 times if you want to solve an industry problem and uh, in fact 
if you solve that problem, if you attempt solving that problem without telling the license provider, it may be a violation and legal action uh, in theory can be taken against you. So, uh, I tell Scilab uh, is uh, very good, it uh, answers all these questions. It is also possible that some of your students could become entrepreneurs. Now, once again, entrepreneur means it is an industrial activity, it is no longer an academic activity and, um, and what about the investment? It becomes very expensive if they have to buy commercial software, any commercial software, whereas Scilab is open source software. And uh, the initial investment is saved from them. So, the money, seed money that the startups get can be utilized for uh, something lot more important. In fact, I would say that uh, using commercial software in academia is equivalent to, is almost like using books that the students cannot take outside your college compound. Okay? Whereas, if you use open source software, they are uh, free to use them in your college, outside, wherever they are uh, and so on and so forth, while traveling, coming to uh, college, going back home, all kinds of things. Okay. So, Scilab is one such great software. So, let us uh, focus on Scilab in the rest of this presentation. Scilab is uh, free and open source software. It is a great substitute for MATLAB. In fact, if you start using it, you will see that commands are very similar to MATLAB. Okay. And I would say that it is about 95 percent compatible and so it is very easy to migrate a code that you might already have uh, in let us say in MATLAB into Scilab. And Xcos is a good replacement for Simulink. Uh, some people immediately ask when I talk about open source equivalent, people immediately ask Octave and they ask why not Octave, why are you using Scilab? Uh, here is the answer, uh, Octave does not have an equivalent of Simulink. I hear some of you saying that unless there is an equivalent of Simulink, I will not switch over. Uh, so, Scilab has it. Um, having said that, Scilab has uh, no problems with Octave. As a matter of fact, the open source software, all of them work together. Uh, they all have open API. Uh, I will show you later that Scilab will, uh, Scilab works with Octave. In fact, we do uh, make use of functions that are written in Octave inside Scilab. As a matter of fact, all of Octave functions uh, are available now in Scilab. So, we have done that work. I will discuss that when we go to the toolbox part that comes uh, later on in this lecture demonstration. So, let us go to the next slide. Scilab is an excellent computational environment. Linpack, Icepack, Lopack, these are heavy duty numerical engines. Okay? These have been uh, developed by experts, um, I would say 30, 40 years ago. Uh, that 30, 40 years uh, is an important statement because uh, these packages have been used by millions of people all over the world for 30, 40 years. That means, if there is any bug that has been completely identified, isolated and solved. And so, all these amazing software tools are available on Scilab. In fact, I can say that Scilab is built on these numerical engines, state of the art numerical engines. Uh, not only that, it has other software like Docile and ODE Pack, which could be available only in Scilab because of licensing requirement. For example, if there is a software that says, look, I am open source software, if you want to use me, you also have to be open source software. Then obviously, commercial software cannot use that. Such software is also available on Scilab. Okay? So, to tell more about uh, how reliable is Scilab. So, here I have this slide on that. CNES is an acronym. It is a French acronym. It is uh, like our ISRO. This is the French Aerospace Corporation. You may not have heard of it, but you would have heard of Ariane rockets that have been launched by CNES. In fact, GSAT 16. Uh, in fact, even subsequent to that, there was a GSAT launch. It was done by Ariane. So, India's uh, GSAT 16 launched, if you see here. 
and I'm not sure whether you can see it. Let me make it bigger. Okay, I'll just say no thanks. So if you see here, it reads this, and you can say that this GSAT 16 was launched by the European launcher Ariane 5, right? So this is the Ariane I'm talking about, and this is the product of CNES, which is the French Aerospace Organization. Okay. So, you saw that that Ariane launches our satellite, possibly we are using that satellite for the current communication, maybe that satellite is actually making sure that whatever I talk can be heard by you. Now, so what is the big deal, what is the connection between that and Scilab? It turns out that CNES relies on Scilab for many critical calculations. For example, I want to show you the talk by T. Martin of CNES on Scilab. Let me show you where it is. I have opened all of this. So, here is, uh, I have gone to this page. It is the Scilab Tech. Um, in fact, there was a meeting, first ever Scilab user conference. Let me make this bigger, uh, Scilab Tech. And you can see the keynote address. I gave the keynote address here. You can see that this was held in Paris. National Mission on Education through ICT. In fact, I talked about open source software in the year 2009 in uh, Paris, that was the keynote address. In fact, there I mentioned about a textbook companion for the first time ever. But if you go down here, you see this use of Scilab for space mission analysis by T. Martin CNES. Let me click this and it will take you to the next page. If you want to see the slides, you can download this, but I am not going to click that. Basically, what he says is, let me make it bigger. So, you can actually see it better. So, Scilab has been used successfully now for several years in CNES, which is a French national space agency. And so, he talks about the presentation will explain how Scilab is used throughout the satellite life cycle from the early trajectory design phases up to the operations and so on and so forth. In fact, if you see this slides, he goes on talking about how Scilab is used extensively in French Aerospace Corporation that launches Ariane rockets, which in turn places many of our satellites in the orbit. Now, as a matter of fact, I was the session chairman for this talk and I asked uh, Mr. Martin, do not you use anything other than Scilab? You seem to be using Scilab for everything. So, if they can launch Ariane rockets and place our satellites in orbit using Scilab, it can certainly be used for your requirement, namely optimization, differential equation, um, and FFT, all kinds of things. Name it, Scilab can do that. So, let me go to the next slide. Of course, there are few more industrial applications of Scilab also. Um, I already have the, uh, the link, so let me just go and do this anyway, show it to you. Uh, so, here for example, open source model based systems engineering model reduction for wind farm optimization. This is enhanced ground proximity warning system, design of experiments and optimization of aircraft design. In fact, this is the one, I think this is another example from Ariane. Uh, if I click this, it will probably take you there. So, every one of them, uh, you know, has lot of things and they have hosted some of them. Uh, here it is, design of experiments and optimization of aircraft design. and um, so, they talk about how they have, you know, done this work and so on. So, let me go back. So, anyway, I gave uh, samples of few more industrial applications of Scilab. Let us move on. So, this kind of completes the uh, first part, namely, uh, you know, Scilab is great stuff. Scilab is great stuff, but it is not that it does not have problems. Uh, what are the problems? Good documents are missing in open source software because there is no company that is behind it to create this kind of documents. So, at the beginning of this, uh, our project, we said that, look, Scilab is a great stuff. Uh, we should uh, promote it. We should make it easy for people to use. So, we came up with this solution called textbook companion. So, what is it? I will just show this to you. Go to the next slide. Okay. So, this is the second topic that I am going to, textbook companion. We would also call it as TBC, textbook companion, TBC. 
So we started by saying, why don't we use students for uh, creating these documents? Documents are in short supply. We have lots of students. Why don't we ask students to create documents? The problem is students are good in coding, but not in documentation. So we said, you know, it's a problem because India has 10 lakh engineering students every year. So that means in four years, we have 40 lakh engineering students. If only they can do the documentation, it will be fantastic. We, would, we can cover all open source software, but they are bad in documentation. They are good in coding though. So we said, why don't we solve the inverse problem? What is the inverse problem? Ask the students to create code for existing documents. And what are existing documents for students? It is, it is standard textbook. So we said, ask the students to write Scilab code for solved examples of standard textbooks. We are not talking about unsolved problems. We are talking about, you know, every book has solved example. The instructor, the author of the book gives an example, works it out. So we asked the students, why don't you write a Scilab code and when you solve it using Scilab, go line by line and the result of every line should match the corresponding answer given in the book. Why answer is given? How do you know answer is given? It is a solved example. So answer is given. So it is easy to create, easy to validate and it can be easily contributed by the student who does not have to write a single line of documentation. Students write only code for these. If they do it for the whole book, a book typically has 70, 80 examples. Some bigger books have some 150, 120 examples, whatever that is. If they do it for a whole book, we call it 1 TBC. That is, 1 TBC has textbook companion of a particular book has Scilab code for all solved problems of that book. Okay? But remember, it has only the Scilab code. It has only Scilab code. It has no text. It has no documentation. If you want to understand it, you have to open the book. As a result, we are not violating any copyright. Okay? Because nothing from the book is reproduced because this textbook has only code after code after code. Okay? One book is, if they do it for a whole book, we call it one textbook companion. Okay? And thanks to MHRD, thanks to the National Mission on Education through ICT that funded the FOSI project. We pay rupees 12,000 rupees for a student who creates one complete textbook. I okay? will show you when I go to the website how one can access this, how one can contribute to this and so on. We go to the next slide. So, because we have lots of students and the students are good in coding, a student can say that, look, I attended this class. This book is not already created. This book is not already covered in textbook companion. So I want to take it up. So they propose it and then we permit them and they do this. We have created more than 500 Scilab textbook companions. We have more than 500 Python textbook companions. You do the same thing with Python, it becomes a Python textbook companion. That is for every solved problem, you give Python code, it becomes a Python textbook companion. So we have eSIM textbook companion. We have an open form textbook companion. We have open model like a textbook companion. We have just started our textbook companion. Your students can participate in all of these. I will show you more about this as we go along. So our Scilab textbook companion, of course, the focus in today's lecture demonstration is Scilab. We are of course discussing Scilab TBC textbook companion. More than 1000 college students and faculty have contributed to this development. In the previous slide, I said more than 500, it turns out that it is actually more than 550 textbooks. And if you assume that there are 100 examples in each book, together it will be 55,000 uh, examples. It turns out that there are actually 65,000 examples. Uh, these have been coded by uh, 1000 college students and faculty of all colleges across the country. So, in fact, uh, those of you who are watching this lecture demonstration, it is possible that some of your own students, maybe the past students have already contributed to 
this effort. Okay, now I am going to give a demonstration. So, I will give a demo of Scilab Cloud on Garuda. Garuda is the uh, cloud uh, on which uh, CDAX uh, creation Garuda Cloud and this is in Bangalore and um, uh, we have hosted Scilab on top of that. Um, I have given this demonstration from various parts of the world. Uh, so, now I am going to give this demonstration from, so let me go there. Okay. So, let me go to Scilab on cloud. Okay. So, so, this is just a browser. I am using Chrome. You can use Chrome or Firefox or whatever it is. So, let me just add 1 plus 2. So, this goes to the Garuda cloud. So, you see the answer as 3, answer has come as 3. Of course, you do not need Scilab to add 1 and 2, but this gives an idea that Scilab can be used as a computing uh, machine. I mean this uh, cloud can be used for computing. So, what I am going to do now is I am going to show you the textbook companion. Remember, we are talking about 550 textbooks available on uh, Scilab cloud. It has 65,000 examples. All of them are here. So, and these are classified under various categories. So, let me, I want to make it bigger. Okay. Okay. I got a feedback that it is difficult to see. I just did 1 plus 2, I got the answer 3. So, let me just uh, uh, see the category here. There are lots of topics. Okay, let me take, uh, I could choose anything. Let me choose control theory and control systems, which happens to be my uh, field. And I will take uh, BCCO, automatic control systems. Remember, this is the textbook companion we are going through. This cloud is capable of doing Scilab computation. I did 1 plus 2, it gave me the answer as 3. Now, I am saying I am going to use the same facility to run the textbook companion created by one of the 1000 students. So, here is the book that I have taken. What are other books? What are the other 550 books? I am going to show you later. Okay? Of course, you can uh, actually go through this and browse this for yourself. So, I have selected automatic control systems. Now, let me select frequency domain analysis and let me choose body plot. Okay? The moment I select this, I have got the code. See this? I have got the code coming. So, now let me execute. So, let me execute. Now, it is executing, the answer should come here. Remember, it goes to Garuda Cloud in Bangalore. This, of course, requires that uh, you need access to internet. Uh, of course, you can do this through your smartphone while traveling, for example, going by bus to your house. You, you know, you just open the smartphone and you want to do the computation, you want to set a paper, you know, you can do that. So, while uh, it is executing, let me go to the server is unable to serve your request. Please try after some time. Okay? So, uh, I think internet, there seems to be some problem. We will come back to this page. Uh, I am going to ask my staff members to look into this, why it is not working. Um, in the meantime, I am going to show you um, some of the things, uh, the textbook companion, so that you do not have such problems. You can actually download all the code and keep it locally. So, let me uh, you want me to make it bigger? Okay. So, where did I come? I have come to scilab.in. Scilab.in and if you see on the uh, left hand side, you have something called textbook companion project. So, let me click this. It actually explains what this is and uh, it of course, talks about internship, guidelines for coding, honorarium, FAQ and so on. Right here, I am going to click this completed books. Let me click this. So, you can see the completed books here. It turns out that the total number of books completed as of today is 562, and these are all here. If I click this control theory and control systems, it takes me here. Remember this automatic control system that I was showing. 
but then it has 12 books. Similarly, if you go up fluid mechanics, there are 31 books, chemical engineering, 26 books and so on. So, here is thermodynamics, mechanical engineering, signal processing. Okay. So, let us take one of the very famous books in signal processing, digital signal processing by Prokis. This is used in uh, many uh, top universities across the world. Okay. So, here it is and it says who is the contributor? Professor Senthil Kumar, Institute of Road and Transport Technology and you can download the Scilab code. Remember I told you that a book has about 100 examples, 120 examples depending on the size and all the solved examples have been coded and the Scilab code is available here. Now, if you click this, you will get the PDF file. Let me click this. So, here it is, it has come. Let me open this. So, you can see that. So, this is, let me make it bigger. So, you can actually zoom it, you can see it bigger. Okay, this is the one I downloaded by the way. This is the PDF I downloaded. You can actually use it as a book. Remember, the other thing that I told you was code of Scilab .sci file .sce file. You can download the whole directory and keep. Here it is the, the same code in uh, PDF version. So, this is a typical textbook companion available in a PDF form. And what does it have? It has if I just scroll down a little bit, let me just scroll down quickly, you will see that it has code after code after code. The, how do I access it? Well, it is very easy. All that you have to do is you go to the beginning and you say that, look, I want to see the code for example 2.1.25, I want to see what is an odd signal. So, let me click this. So, here it is. So, this is for example 2.1.25 odd signal and there are 16 lines of this code and so on. So, you can actually see this. Here is the uh, PDF that I downloaded and of course, you can say that uh, look, I do not want it for the whole book. I want to do this for only one chapter. Then you can say, okay, I want it only for because basically sometimes people say, well, I want to know how to you know multiply two numbers 2 into 3. Then you say no, no, you have to download the whole chapter, you have to download the whole book, you have to figure out how to use it, not required. You want to solve only one particular example, you want to get that code for that only, I tell you how to do that. So, here is the title of the chapter, design of design filters, you can download the entire code. Or you can say that no, I want it for only for problem 8.3.6, which is IAR Butterworth Analog Filter dot AC. So, if I click this, it will download the code required for example 8.36 alone, so that you do not have to worry about the whole book. Okay? Of course, you can download the whole book and keep them if you want, but if you want to see only one thing, not get bothered by a lot of other clutter you do not have to do that. So, I gave you example of uh, textbook companion, here is the typical textbook companion. So, let me close that, if you, if I can, I can download it and keep it as a book if I want and, um, and so, I will close this also. I attempted to give a demo of Scilab Cloud, but I will come back to you. Okay. So, how useful is this uh, textbook companion? First of all, if a teacher says, look, I do not know how to use Scilab, I will ask them, what book are you using? What course are you teaching? What book are you using? And here is the textbook companion. I already have Scilab code for that. So, for example, if you want to say, I do not know how to access FFT, I do not know how to compute FFT, I am teaching this you know let us say signal processing book. So, I will say all right, open that book, go to that example where FFT is done, 
go to that particular chapter, go to that particular example, it could be example 5.3.8, then come to the corresponding textbook companion, open 5.3.8. Now, so it would have been explained, all that you have to do is you have to take it, uh, run it, right, and then you have it working. Now, of course, you could ask, what is the guarantee that book will be there in the textbook companion? The likelihood is very high because it has 550 books. Not only that, we made sure that all AACT approved books, all AACT recommended books are already covered in textbook companion. As a matter of fact, we gave 20 percent extra honorarium to any student who took up an AACTE approved book. So, for those books, we gave a special incentive of additional 20 percent honorarium and we got it done. So, it is likely that, uh, so all AACTE approved textbooks are already available and there are many other books of course, we have covered many of them as well, we have 550 books. So, if in spite of that, your book is not covered, it is a standard textbook, it is a great textbook and so on. Please. I would want you to do that. I would want a bright student from your class to say, to propose to us, I would create this textbook companion. So, we will include that also in the future and we pay them that student, that bright student of yours, a honorarium certificate and so on. Of course, it will appear on the front page, it will say that such and such person from such and such college created the textbook companion and it is used by Scilab community throughout the world. That is a great recognition for you, is not it? Okay. So, you can, uh, this is the way to use it in Scilab. So, it is useful to 99 percent, why am I saying 99 percent? A software, proprietary software like MATLAB is vast. In fact, even Scilab is vast. It turns out that most people do not use even 1 percent of it. Most people do not use even 1 percent of it. For them, that is I would say 99 percent of our population, what we have in the Scilab textbook companion is good enough. By the way, I just came to know that the cloud is working. Okay. So, this is remember this is what we have taken. So, let me execute this. Okay. You can see this wheel spinning, that means it has gone to Garuda cloud. Let us see whether we get the result. There you are. Here is the body plot. Remember, we are running body plot. See this 9.15 body plot. Here it is. I can download it. Uh, you know, if I download it, it will come down here uh, and then you can take it, take a printout and so on. But let me close it now. But notice the results come here. See the results come here. You can see the transfer function 2500 divided by this whole thing and that comes here. This is the result and for those of you who are familiar with uh, this GM, GM stands for uh, gain margin. It is uh, 14.8, face margin is 31.71. How to do that? It is already given here. GM is this, face margin is this. Now, supposing a student says, hey, what will happen if the transfer function gain is not 2500? but it becomes, let us say 5000, the numerator becomes 5000. So, let me change it to 5000. I can change it, remember I added 1 and 2. So, you can do all kinds of calculation. Naturally, I can change the 2500 to 5000 and let me go back and execute this once again. And I want to ask you a small quiz, will the margins go up or down? I have increased the gain. So, of course, gain should come down. I mean, your gain margin should come down, face margin should come down. We will see whether that happens. Okay. Of course, you will see the numerator also changing from 2500 to 5000 now. Okay. I have a feeling that it is slow because there it is. Unable to serve your request, please try after some time. I will come back this to this later. Okay. Okay, so um, what I will do next is to 
go to the slides. Okay, let us go to the next uh, slide. This is an, uh, I believe that Sila textbook companion is an amazing thing. Why? Because see, you look at me, I am getting old. Can you see that? So, the problem is, you know, my memory is very bad. Okay, I forget things. Okay. For example, I do not know what command to use. Okay. And once I, even if I find the command, I do not know the syntax, how many arguments, which argument should come first, second. So, I do not remember all of this. Okay. I see many of you telling, well, Mata Pita Google Devam. Yes, we all know that and I am going to follow that, but to some extent. So, let me just show you that. So, this is a true story, true story. I had a quiz to set for my students and I wanted to set a question in partial fraction expansion. I was teaching a first control course, first quiz. So, I said let us test the students on partial fraction expansion. Now, it turns out that I did not remember the command for partial fraction expansion in Scilab. So, what did I do? I turned to Google. So, I said Scilab partial fraction expansion. So, it gave the answer as PFSS. See this PFSS. So, this is fine, but my experience with contacting Google to find the syntax has not really worked because it will give a million hits and it is very difficult to figure out what happened. So, what I said, so I need to open that website because I opened a new web page for you people. So, let us go there, let us do it. Let me go to scilab.in. Under scilab.in, there is a search button on top. You can see the TBC code search. What does it do? Remember, I have 65,000 examples already coded. I will search amongst the 65,000 examples. So, in other words, I do not depend on Google, but I do a search within my textbook companion. What do I search for? I search for PFSS. What is this PFSS? This is the name of this command. How did I get it? From Google. From Google search, I got the name of the command. In order to find the syntax, I come here and do a TBC code search and it says I search for PFSS. Remember, this is what I got from uh, Google search. When I do that, it searches and says 140 results found. Amongst the 65,000 examples, there are 140 examples that talk about PFSS and it says what these books are, 1, 2 and so on. Okay, I go down and I say, oh, no, no, I am not familiar with this and so on. Finally, when I come to this number 27, I say, hey, you know, I used this book when I was a student. Let me view this example. Okay. And it already takes me to Scilab on cloud. Okay. So, what I did on that day was, I got this example. It tells me you know numerator has to be created like this, like this, denominator has to be created like this and then the transfer function numerator by denominator and then I just have to say PFSS. It tells exactly how to use it. So, I can use it directly. I run it. Let me see if I can run it uh, this cloud. If so, I will be able to get the answer. There it is, denominator. Okay. So, these are the partial fraction. You can see the partial fraction. Here is the partial fraction, denominator is s plus 2, the other one is s minus 2. If I want, I can go back and change, run it, and so on. So, let me remove this semicolon. For example, if you see here, if you see here, only denominator is displayed that you know because denominator does not have a semicolon, numerator has a semicolon. Let me remove this semicolon so that I can see the numerator also. I mean those of you who are familiar with MATLAB or Scilab or Octave will know this. So, let me execute this once again. 
So hopefully we will get NUM here. Hey, this is giving some other answer. Okay. Okay, not sure what is happening. I think a uh, lot of people are once again using. So let me try to run it. Let's see whether it works. So uh, anyway, you saw that uh, at least 2,500. The previous example you all saw it. Oh, this is the body plot that has come. Okay. So uh, actually, this problem is happening because uh, now we are using uh, it on a view server, and it behaves in an unpredicted way. This is the answer I got for earlier. Oh, it put me. So it has actually. Actually, both are connected. It doesn't know that it has to pipe it. It's a problem of a view, not of the server. Okay, so um, so let's go back and execute this. Let's see what happens. I should close this, right? Let me close this. Okay, I should close this also. Let me close this also. Ah, so this is executing. Okay, here it is. And you can see now it has 5000 in the numerator and you can also see the margins lower now. Can you see that? Previously it was 14 and 30, now it has come to 8 and 17, right? Okay, anyway, so I was trying to do too many things. But obviously you will not be doing solving two problems simultaneously, you will be solving only one problem at a time. So let me come back to this, uh, search within this. Remember this, let me give this example again. Um, this is that uh, partial fraction expansion. I open it. So, when I open it, I will go and close this so that there is no, this browser does not get confused. Actually, this is a pro, not a problem of a view, it is a problem of the browser, the way it is designed. So, it does not know which uh, window it should pipe it to. Okay. Remember, I wanted to remove this numerator. Let me remove this. Let me execute this. There it is. Now, we can see the numerator also. I can see it because I removed the semicolon from here. Numerator, denominator, uh, then uh, this is a partial fraction 1, partial fraction 2 and so on. So, of course, uh, you know what you can do is you can take this example, you can modify it and give it. You can give the example as it is to your students as assignment, lab problem, your exam problem, your whatever quiz, whatever it is. It turns out that in this particular example, I use this example as it is without any change. I gave it as a problem to my students and they all did this computing. Let us go back to our um, slides. So, this is the code search to locate syntax. I mean this is going to give you so much help for all of you, you have to set problems, you have to set new problems, all kinds of problems and you have it now. All your examples are available on your fingertip. Now you can do this while traveling, you might be traveling, you have a smartphone, you can do that and you get your problem set uh, for your exam, for your assignment, lab and so on. And this is available for 65,000 examples of standard textbooks. right? Yeah, let us go to the next slide. So, the next one, lab migration. Okay. So, uh, do you want to migrate your lab to Scilab? Okay. It is a great thing because uh, if you want to use a commercial package in your lab, there is a problem because you have some limited number of licenses. Even of course, if you have unlimited license also, once students go home, they cannot access it. Once they go to hostels, they may not be able to access it. They may not be able to access it while they are, you know, traveling and so on. So, there are many problems. Um, it turns out that in IIT Bombay, we have limited licenses of MATLAB. So, it turns out that as soon as somebody access it, that license get locked up for 4 hours. Even if they just use it only once, that gets locked up for 4 hours, then nobody else can use it during that time. That means, that licenses get consumed quickly. You do not have enough licenses. So, supposing you have a problem like this, you want to migrate your lab to Scilab, we will help you. Okay? So, that 
infinite number of people can use. Everybody can have their own copy. They can do this on the smartphone like I showed you. They can do it on tablet like I showed you. They can download it on their uh, low cost laptop uh, and so on and so forth on Windows platform, Mac platform, Linux platform, does not matter whatever that platform is, Scilab will run for you. So, do you want to migrate your lab to Scilab? We are ready to help you. State your lab experiments, you code them in Scilab. If you say, look, I already know Scilab, I know how to migrate, let me migrate, but I will share that for the community, to the community, let everybody use it, we will give a honorarium and a certificate. Or supposing you say, look, I want to do this, but I do not know how to use it. Can you please convert this into Scilab and give it to me? We will do this for you and give you the Scilab code for your experiments. And it can be done by experts, Scilab experts from colleges. You will see in the next slide, many labs have already been migrated to Scilab by experts across the country from various colleges across the country and they are ready to do this help, give this help for your college so that you can migrate your lab also to Scilab. So, let me show that here it is completed labs. So, you can see that there are many labs available. So, you can see down there are totally 64 labs that are that have been migrated. You can see colleges that have done this. There is one VIT University Chennai, there is one St. Xavier's Catholic College of Engineering and so on. There are many colleges, Vishwakarma Institute, Arya Net and so on. Vesit, Anjuman, Takur College, Vesit has done lot of uh, lab migrations as you can see. Okay. So, Mumbai based college. Now, if you want to say what does this look like? Okay. Let us say here is the one from, uh, let us say take this from Vesit, say antenna wave propagation. If I click this, then it gives the same thing the way we saw the textbook companion. So, let us download the PDF of solutions and it has come here. Let me open this and this is, let me zoom it, cell lab manual for antenna wave propagation. Okay, and you can actually go and see that. Okay, there are not too many problems, too many labs here. There seems to be only one here. So let me take uh, one more example. So let me take this uh, DSP, digital signal processing, download of. PDF of lab solutions. I have to download the PDF. If you download, you will get the Scilab code. Okay. So, let me see what this looks like. So, let me zoom this and you can see lots of labs. So, it depends on the previous one that antenna lab has apparently only one experiment, whereas here this one has 13. Of course, this is a basic lab. Let us see that So, periodogram based spectral estimation. So, it is all here. Once again, it is the same way that we saw with the textbook companion. So, you can download this, uh, you can go back here, you can see all of them. It is possible that the lab that you want to migrate is already migrated by somebody else. Those experiments are already coded by somebody. So, all that you need to do is to propose to us that you want to migrate. We have some conditions. What are those? So, it is all here. Lab migration project, it says procedure, coding guidelines, honorarium, completed labs. Completed labs, we saw 64. There are many more labs in progress. Let us click that. You can see that 15 more labs are happening. We would want all of you to propose labs to migrate your labs from whatever software you are using to Scilab and the help is already available because all that you have to do is to go to the completed lab and then you can uh, you know your experiments are probably already coded and already available. So, let me just go back. Okay. So, this is what I said. Do you want to migrate your lab to Scilab? We will help you state your lab experiment. You code them in Scilab. We will give you a honorarium and certificate 
and we will put your name and say your college did this lab migration for the whole world to see or we can get them coded by Scilab experts from colleges. Okay. 65 labs already migrated, actually it is 64, 65th is almost going to be there. You can see that 15 are under progress. The next one that I want to talk about is building Scilab toolboxes. Some of you might say, hey, you know all this is fine, 65,000 examples is okay, it is going to be good enough for 99 percent of the people. What about that one percent? I belong to that one percent. Can you please help me? So, we have indeed gone about building Scilab toolboxes. Uh, how do we build a toolbox? We identify open source software that have required functions. Basically, uh, Scilab toolbox may not have enough functions, right? You want to do image processing, some tool, uh, some function is not there in Scilab or you want to do signal processing, you want to do uh, optimization, it is not there. So, what we do is we identify those functions that are present in open source software. For example, we have Octave, we have OpenCV, we have IT++, this is for communication toolbox, we have IPOpt, this is a great optimization toolbox, Kine OR, this is a collection of lots of optimization uh, code, uh, you know these are all available call them from Scilab using C, C++, Python, whatever is required, call those things so that those functions are available and by, as I mentioned earlier, these are all proven code. Octave is a fantastic software, IP Opt, Opt is excellent software, uh, OpenCV is the state of the art in image processing. We can call all of them from Scilab easily, okay? we have done all of that, so they run very fast because they are also compiled code. They are not interpreted code uh, like let us say an SCI function, uh, uh, an interpreted function. These are compiled code. So, not only are they, are they proven, but they also run very fast because they are compiled code. The end user in Scilab does not know all the details. He thinks or she thinks that they are actually calling a Scilab function. It just that it goes and calls that code and you get that. Okay. So, to tell more about it, so we have actually a paper um, that we wrote, Shamika is leading this effort, the toolbox effort, um, uh, this developing Scilab toolboxes a multi approach, this is an IEEE paper, um, I uploaded, not sure whether it is available, I, I gave one more PDF file. Did you upload that? Is it here? Yeah. So, can you show that? Yeah, here is a thing. Okay. So, here is this uh, uh, paper that I have uploaded. You can actually see this. Okay. So, uh, this is something all of you will have access to IEEE papers. You should be able to locate it. And we actually explain in this paper how we built toolboxes. For example, this talks about how we are using IT++, Octave and so on. Okay. It talks about the, uh, diagrammatically it explains how we built this. Okay. And then optimization toolbox, how did we go about building? And this one actually talks about uh, optimization toolbox, let me go to the next page. This one talks about signal processing toolbox. Okay, our solution and so on. So, let me just go back to slides. slides. Yeah. So, this paper will be uh, available, you will have access to IEEE uh, uh, proceedings, you can download this. Those of you who are interested Remember, I'm talking about the top one percent of the people who want to build toolboxes, who want to use toolboxes. You know, we are ready to work with you. Okay, let me go to the next uh, slide. Now, where are these toolboxes available? These are uh, one of them. Optimization toolbox is already released. Let me show that to you. Here is the atoms. So you have to go to. Uh, I'll make it bigger, but I don't know whether the URL will become bigger. But anyway, you can locate this Scilab, it is called 
https colon slash slash atoms dot scilab dot org. So, once you go there, you can search for FOSI. I search and I got this FOSI optimization toolbox. Yeah, let me zoom it bigger. You can see this FOSI optimization toolbox. There are 2662 downloads as of February 13, 2017. Many more people have downloaded since that time. It is an amazing toolbox, FOSI optimization toolbox. You know, it has everything that you would want in an optimization toolbox. It says on how it is available, what are the features, all functions, and then for various uh, systems, you can download and use them. And other toolboxes to be released shortly, code is available here. Okay, let me show you what other toolboxes are available. So, let me go to scilab.in, what other toolboxes are going to be available that I want to show you. Under that, you can see this. So, I went to scilab.in, in that you see FOSI scilab toolbox. If you click this, all the toolboxes are listed here. Optimization toolbox, signal processing toolbox, image processing and computer vision toolbox, system identification toolbox, control system toolbox, scilab 2c toolbox, scilab octave interface toolbox. Using this, you can call all of octave and there are of course, some examples for lecture demonstration. They, some of the examples that I have used are there. You can of course, go and access. These are not available, released yet under atoms, but they are going to be released soon. I am going to show you the progress of each of these toolboxes later. If there is an interest, we will give a demo of some of these toolboxes by Shamika as we go along. Maybe after I finish my presentation, Shamika can uh, give a demo in case there are, uh, there is a, an interest. Let us go back to the slides. So, here is the Scilab toolbox usage. Uh, here is the number of MATLAB functions, here is the corresponding number of Scilab functions that we have created. Most of them uh, have been created by us uh, and of course, we have had lots of interns from colleges such as yours, brightest students. Uh, we have had even 50 interns working with us, uh, taking one toolbox and completing all the functions. Right? Signal processing, we are almost there, uh, image processing, we are almost there. So, some of the missing functions are possibly not very important. Uh, once again, these should be good enough for lots of people. Some of them we need help. Uh, if you have a bright student, you have a PhD from a great college, great institution and you want to contribute, create a toolbox, create a function, uh, you know, you are most welcome. Okay? These are all the toolboxes that we are working on. This explains the progress in some other toolboxes. Let me go to the next slide. So, the next question, now topic number 5. Some of you asked me, okay, all this is fine, but we want to interact with you, we have questions. How do we help you? Is there any help? I have an advanced question, I know how to use textbook companion, all that is fine, but I want to write a function, I need help. I want to become an intern, I need help. How do I communicate with you? So, for that, we have this forum. So, let us go to the forum. Uh, let me go to FOSI.in first. FOSI is the umbrella organization. You can see that uh, in that um, forums can be reached from here. But before I go to forums, I want to show you some of the things that we are doing. So, Scilab you have already seen. Python is another activity, major activity. ESIM is electronic circuit design simulation. We ourselves created this. This also could be useful. Let me make this slightly bigger so you can read it better. We have OSDAG. This is steel structure design. DW SIM for uh, chemical process simulation. Open foam, computational fluid dynamics. Open model ECA. This is an amazing uh, modeling and simulation environment. What tools I talked about and so on. There are many things available. We also have R, we started creating textbook companions on R. So, you can, whatever I am going to talk about these forums, you can ask questions on any of these. 
So, let me go to I think it is in forums.fossy.in. Forums. So, let me just search. So, forums.fossy.in that is all, that is why we say Matapita Google Devam, right. So, here it is, you can ask questions, you can. So, there are people who have asked questions. So, what we would want you to do is, do you have a question? Do you want to talk to us? Do you have a question on toolbox, how to build it, how to contribute? You come on this forum and ask us a question. So, you can ask a question, but if you want to ask a question, you have to register. Until now, for whatever I did till now, you do not have to log in at all. We do not even want to know who you are, what college you are from, what is your name, what is your email address, what is your password. We do not want to know any of those. But if you want to ask a question, you have to register. Of course, in this case also, we would not know your password, because the password is encrypted and kept and only then you can do. So, let me log in. If my password is correct, so this is fine. Do you want to save this? Never, do not want to save my password here. Now, I can select a first category, let us say Scilab and I can ask this question, question description and submit the question. It goes into the forum or people see it. Of course, you could ask questions like, um, you know, what is a great movie running in, in uh, Mumbai? Of course, you can ask this question. But then if you do that, then this forum will be useless. So, I would want you to ask focused questions, so that it is not only can we answer your question, somebody else will also answer your question and this will be a useful forum. We would want you to control yourself and ask the right question and we will be able to help you. So, let me go back. So, do you have a question? That is where you have to post. Okay. Then what do we do? post them on posse forum like I showed. Only thing is you have to register to post. Okay. Please do register. If there are posts, we can come live on. In fact, what we also offer to do is every Tuesday 3 to 3.30, we offer to come live on Google Hangout. Of course, Google Hangout can accommodate only 25 people at a time, but I do not think there will be more than 25 people because previously we advertised there were not too many people. So, 25 is a big number. Of course, if there are lots of people, we can come through AVU once again, but I believe it is not required. For example, some 10 people may say, look, I have a question on image processing. So, fine, you come on, you post it on the forum, we will come, our image processing person will be available and they will answer your questions. So, we have already announced Google Hangout on Tuesdays, 3 to 3.30 pm. So, you have specific questions. Please post them now, uh, you know one of our team members will be there next Tuesday 3 to 3.30 and where to come that also we will announce it there as an answer to your forum question. Okay, let me go ahead and of course, we would also want experts to come and join. Maybe you are an expert in let us say power systems lab. Okay? So, and there is a question on power systems, please come and answer, be available on Google Hangout and answer your question. Because this is very important, we want to recognize all people who are good in certain topic. And of course, post questions on other software also, that is what I have written. Unfortunately, I am not able to see this here. So, it does not matter. What I mean is, so remember, Fossey.in covers lot of other topics, DWSIM, Open Modelica, Open Foam, Python. You may have question on those, you could post them also. And if there are a lot of questions on Python, maybe somebody from the Python team will appear and answer your questions. So, this forum is extremely useful. If we use it nicely, it will be very good. But supposing you ask me a question, is it still raining heavily in Mumbai? Obviously, this is a spam and you do not want to do that. right? You want to restrict to uh, targeted questions, then we can really make it useful and we can, our team can really make itself available to answer all your questions. Remember, now we are talking about the top 1 percent. Okay? Top 1 percent, so you are the experts, you will also able to contribute. You will be able to help other people. So, we want to build this as a forum, where
where experts can come uh, also contribute. Of course, there will be some beginners also and they can be helped. Now, how to get started? All this is great, fantastic. I, I have never used Scilab, can I get started? So, how do you get started? This is the point number 6 in the outline that I presented. So, here is a set of things you need to do. For example, how do you do that? Try the Scilab TBC for the textbook you are using, that is the easiest. You are, a, you are a faculty member, you are teaching a course, you have a standard textbook, its TBC is available, start with that. You do not even have to do coding, you do not have to know, just go through it, Scilab is so easy to understand. Okay. Then what do you do? Modify the code to solve your problems. Learn Scilab from spoken tutorials. Okay. You are running, then you say, hey, I want to you know, learn, I want to teach Scilab, I want to offer Scilab to my students. Immediately, I get a call, can you come to this place X, Y, Z and conduct this course? There are 5000 engineering colleges and many of them want to switch to Scilab. How many colleges can I go to? How many colleges can we go to? You do not need us actually. That is why we created spoken tutorials. We created spoken tutorials so that you can learn yourself. Spoken tutorial is created for self-learning. Okay? So, learn Scilab from spoken tutorial. I am going to show you where spoken tutorials are. So, let us go to the go back to the website. So, let me come to spoken tutorials. So, here it is spoken hyphen tutorial dot org. It is an amazing uh, project. Uh, we have um, large number of tutorials, lots of topics. You can actually go through this. In case you are not familiar with spoken tutorial, you can actually click this. You will see lots of these. But here the focus is Scilab. Let us go to Scilab and let us choose English. Let us search and it says there are 25 spoken tutorials. We start off by saying why Scilab, installing. Of course, you actually know a lot more reasons why you should use Scilab because whatever I talked till now is not captured in these spoken tutorials. Okay? This is the special talk that I am giving that explains the 65,000 examples. Right? Why Scilab, installing, getting started, vector operations, each of them is about 10 minutes long. For example, you can actually click that and you can play that and so on. Right? Welcome to the spoken tutorial on vector operations. Okay. So, I am going to pause this. Let me go back. Okay. Now, remember the most important thing about spoken tutorials is that it is created for self learning. That means, you can learn yourself. Your students can learn by themselves. You do not need anybody else. So, you start with textbook companion, you learn all that, then you say that, okay, I want to go next level, come to spoken tutorials, do that. Now, how does one learn this? Okay. We uh, use a method called side by side learning. Basically, what you will do is you will open uh, the spoken tutorials on one half of the screen. In other half of the screen, you will open the Scilab software itself. Remember, Scilab software is open source software. You can download, you can also open it simultaneously. So, let me show you one tutorial called side by side learning. It is an important one. This is the method I would want you to follow. If I am not mistaken, it is in something called spoken tutorial technology. So, maybe towards the end, side by side method is there. So, let me open that. So, let me play this. I found that people are not following this method that explains exactly. The side by side method. So, I created a spoken tutorial to explain model. what is meant by in this side tutorial. By side method. We let me advance a little bit. Learn in this spoken tutorial. Can hyphen tutorial dot org. Let us look at Scilab spoken tutorials. Let me advance a little bit. I have already made it as small as a little bit more. In this case, first, should okay. we maximize the software window? You can see that I have opened the Scilab software here, but this is the video. You can see that this, is, this says it is in English. 
this is the scilab website this is the video that is playing open the video in half the screen in other half open scilab software listen to a command pause it okay for example if you play this no you again see this button here see this button so this is a video button you can uh, vcr button you can stop play and all that listen to a command pause that try it out if it works go to the next command if not rewind listen to it try it again it will always work because it is created for self learning right it will always work because it is created for self learning so your students are smart enough to do it by themselves you don't need me all the 5000 colleges don't need to call me you have to pay my airfare and then you have to pay some extra charges all that is not required it is too expensive for you to do that in fact we are going to make it expensive so that you don't call me right we are going to make it expensive you don't call me and this is available free of cost for you right so now one other thing that i want to show you we have a great team that will organize sila workshops for you in fact let me show you how to access it see this software training you are in spoken iphone tutorial.org it's in our every website let me just uh, click that again see this software training if you click this under this you see this contacts for training okay and you have our representatives for all states so you can see their names you can see state name of the person email address phone number and we have covered all the states uh, what i am going to do is my spoken tutorial team members are here and i am going to pass on the mic they will just mention their name and their state okay because we may be running out of time because later on i am going to give the uh, mic also to shamika and the toolbox team so just briefly introduce yourselves and uh, they are all at your service yes uh, chama please go ahead yeah uh, hello everybody so nice to connect with you uh, i am shama and i head this uh, training team or look after the training activities uh, nationally so i am you know my mail id and uh, number is also there and you want to get connected with anybody you can you know contact me or contact the individuals uh, you know if you are in that particular state i'm handing over to hello everybody my name is nidhi soni and i'm taking care of rajasthan state thank you hi everyone uh, my name is varsha dant and i'm handling uttar pradesh state hello everyone my name is sanchita samant and i'm taking care of andhra pradesh state thank you hello my name is jessi velu swami and i'm handling chatisgarh arunachal pradesh and assam thank you hello everyone my name is madhukriti shrivastava i am taking care of gujarat tripura and sikkim hello everyone my name is pooja singh and i am taking care of meghalaya and bihar state hello everyone my name is dina lo and i take care of the technical uh, web queries of the team thank you hello everyone my name is ruchi sharma and i'm taking care of uttarakhand thank you hello uh, my name is swapnil more and i take care of nagaland and jharkhand hello my name is vidya kadam and i'm handling maharashtra state hello uh, i am anushree here and i'm taking care of karnataka state thank you hello everyone i am atrupti more and i'm taking care of uh, west bengal and mizoram hello everyone myself swati dongar dewe taking care of odisha goa and manipur thank you i am sandra cruz and i'm taking care of delhi and pondicherry yeah hello everyone uh, i am mohammad qasim i'm handling telangana state hi everyone i am anita and i'm taking care of himachal pradesh thank you so that is the spoken tutorial team and they are available so you want to make it available in your college they are ready to uh, set it up by the way we have already trained 2 lakh students on scilab so you want to see i'll show you our website i'm going to take you to a place called um, spoken tutorial.org we have something called statistics if you click here 
you will see that we have trained close to 40 lakh, 39 lakh actually and uh, different states you can actually choose but let us choose uh, Scilab here. filter, we can see that we have trained 217,000 students on Scilab in various states and uh, you know you are welcome to uh, contact our team members, they will be happy to set up this workshop for you and all your students will know start using Scilab from the next day. Okay, create textbook companions, Text, how to create textbook companions, remember I already showed you in Scilab.in, all the information is there, how to process, how to create. Let me show that for you. In fact, you can do this here. This is the this is the Scilab.in. You can see the textbook companion project. It actually talks about internship guidelines, honorarium, completed books, and so on. It says for more details, click here. So all that information is available here. Contribute to lab migration. We would want you to do that. I have already explained how to do that. I am saying that do it in that sequence. Do it in that sequence. Try the Scilab TBC first, modify it, use it, learn Scilab from textbook companion, use our team, create textbook companions, contribute to live migration and going ahead. Now you want to be a partner, first of all train your students on Scilab. Then you say, look train the trainers on Scilab, I want to be a partner because I have trained 100 college teachers from various colleges and they are training their people, so I am one level higher. Answer the questions posed by others on the forum. Remember, we are going to ask questions, you are going to ask questions, we are going to answer, we want experts to answer. So, we will know who is the expert, who is answering these questions. Contribute a function to a Scilab toolbox, lead the development of a Scilab to toolbox. Here we are leading and you contribute a function. You faculty member contributes, student contributes, becomes an intern or you yourself can spend couple of months at IIT Bombay, whatever it is. Then you say that, hey, I have a great idea. I want to lead the development of a Scilab toolbox, power sim for example, or you know power system simulation or whatever it is. So, this is all I wanted to speak. I have taken lot more time. Join the 3 p.m. meetings on Tuesdays. This is what I have written. Join the 3 p.m. meetings on Tuesdays. It is not seen for whatever reason. I know that there are lots of questions, I am going to answer some of the questions and I also want to introduce my team before I, uh, so let me conclude this, then I am going to give the mic to, um, in fact we can do it right now. Can we uh, show Shamika? I want Shamika and Vinita. So Shamika is the one who leads our uh, uh, toolbox uh, project. And in case there is, uh, Shamika has come prepared to give a demonstration of a toolbox. And of course, a toolbox is uh, something niche that may not be in, of interest to all of you because there are about 2000 people listening and maybe another 2000 people watching it through YouTube. I do not think all 4000 will be interested in, in a signal processing toolbox. So, we can always set it up. For example, you say that next Tuesday, uh, 3 o'clock, Google Hangout. Shamika is going to describe, give a demonstration of let us say uh, image processing toolbox. You lot of people ask for it and be available, she will definitely come and give a demonstration. She may even be able to give a demonstration of two toolboxes. Although we are saying only half an hour, if lot of people are there, keep asking questions, she is not going to give, she is not going to leave halfway, she is going to demonstrate let us say optimization toolbox, image processing toolbox. Uh, let us say signal processing toolbox, whatever you have a question on, she will do that. But right now I am going to ask Shamika to say a few words so you know um, who Shamika is. Hi everyone, my name is Shamika and uh, I have been part of the Scilab group for the past 5 years and currently I am leading the uh, Scilab toolbox development effort. Uh, we have been very happy with the response we have received over AVU as well as um, YouTube and we have been um, trying to answer most of the questions. Um, at the moment, we do not have time to demo the toolboxes, but please do get in touch with us over FOSSI forums. That is the best way to get in touch with us. Please post your queries on Scilab or do request for um, YouTube live sessions and we would be more than happy to conduct them. Um, like Sir said, 
please uh, ask for such sessions so that we can demo our toolboxes and do go through the links that Sir did show over the uh, past two hours so that you can actually start using these toolboxes and also um, contribute to these toolboxes. Um, I'll just hand over the mic to the rest of the team and they'll introduce themselves. Hello everyone, I'm Poonam Borkar and I have joined here as an intern and I'm working on power system project. Uh, it's coding on Scilab. Thank you. My name is Sharvari Namdar. Uh, my, I'm intern here. Uh, I'm doing the project on the load flow analysis and transient stability by using the Scilab software. Thank you. Hi, this is Asutosh Kumar Bhargav. I'm working on control toolbox and identification toolbox. Hi, my name is Tushar Bang and I'm working on power system toolbox. I'm Siddharth and I'm handling the textbook companion project as a reviewer. Hello everyone, I'm Brijesh Gupta and I'm working as a research assistant in Scilab. Hi everyone, my name is Abhinav. I'm working as a research assistant in Scilab team. Give it to Vinita. Uh, hi everyone, we are, I'm uh, Vinita and I'm working as a, uh, one of the managers of FOSSI project and I'm taking care of Scilab, basically uh, the textbook companion and the overall website related to Scilab and the whole thing. Uh, we are really happy with your response and we'll definitely have more sessions like this but we want you all to come to the weekly meetings which we have every Tuesday so we can answer more questions on Scilab and we really look forward to see you on Tuesday. Bye. And uh, we have one more member, Rupak. He will introduce himself. My name is Rupak Rokre. I work at uh, FOSSI and I work for uh, projects such as hardware interfacing with Scilab. So if you have any questions uh, about how do you interface hardware uh, with Scilab and how do you do data acquisitions with it, uh, you feel free to contact us and please do attend our weekly sessions and you can ask questions, you can discuss a lot of things over uh, these live meetings. And uh, I also look after virtual labs, uh, so if you're interested, you can ch check it out. Thank you. Okay, uh, so you saw our team. Uh, I want to spend one more minute on what Rupak talked about. Rupak is the last person who talked about hardware interfacing. In fact, he has uh, set up an amazing uh, lab called single board heater system. Uh, all kinds of control experiments can be done remotely from your college onto the system that we have at IIT Bombay. Uh, you can do open loop experiments, close, basically um, you can do all kinds of control experiments using that. And, um, because of lack of time, we will not uh, give a demonstration, but in one of the weekly meetings, I am sure that Rupa can give a demonstration of that, how you can uh, register yourselves, how you can use it for one of your control labs remotely and so on. So uh, right now, we will not spend uh, too much more time on that. Uh, let me get back, let me complete this. Um, okay. So, I have come to conclusion, Scilab is a great tool worth thousands of rupees if not lakhs. You can solve most of uh, your problems using TBC. You can also learn to add new functions. We welcome Scilab experts in training others on Scilab. Join us in this nation building activity. And this project is funded by the National Mission on Education through ICT, NME ICT through the FOSSI initiative and recently we have also been funded by the Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya National Mission on Teachers and Teaching. Both have come from MHRD Government of India. We are very grateful to them. Remember all the honorarium that we have given, 12,000 rupees to a person um, and then 20 percent increase for AACT approved books. We have done it for, you know, 500 books. Look at the amount involved. Where did this money come from? It has come from MHRD, it has come from taxpayers' money. We are grateful to MHRD for having funded this. but it has come from taxpayers' money. We have to put it to use. We request all of you to use this great facility that we have created with government support. So, with this, I have come to the end of this uh, presentation. I would like to thank you for your uh, uh, patient hearing. Now, in the remaining few minutes, I would like to answer questions if you have any. Um, remember, uh, if you have questions, lot of toolbox related questions and so on can be answered. Uh, through the weekly meeting, but if there are some important questions that I can take them up. One of the things that I want to point out is the Tuesday meeting is not a workshop. If in case you people say, I will come on Tuesday 
to find out what is scilab sorry you are in the wrong place you are in the wrong place that tuesday meeting is not for organizing workshop how to organize workshop i already introduced my spoken tutorial team members please contact them they will organize workshops for you our tuesday meetings will be to answer advanced questions you are writing a function you have difficulty or you want to know about more about some toolbox or you want to see a demo of a toolbox that our team led by shamika has created or you have a question on uh, textbook companion you want to create you want to add something you want to talk to vinita so you can do that or you want to do some lab remote lab you want to talk to rupak that's fine but these are demonstrations answering your specific i mean a few questions this is not to say how to use scilab for 1 plus 2 we can't do that for that we have already created spoken tutorials right so we are talking about uh, next level help because i hear some of you saying look i already know how to do this i want next level help come to the forum post your question and then we will come on tuesdays at 3 o'clock we will answer your questions okay if there are any uh, questions i'll be happy to uh, please go for hand raise in case there are questions do you have any questions uh, for the research purpose we want to use scilab so can you guide us with how to use this say for example we want to get a relationship between independent variable and dependent variables in the optimization to get a linear equation or a polynomial equation equation for the simulation and prediction of the optimal parameters so for that uh, purpose can we use scilab yeah please uh, use the optimization toolbox of scilab it's available tools are available okay. there you can use that but before that would you use that scilab tool uh, textbook companion no sir so why not start using it it's not already agree. available thank you thank you sir. yeah thank you Good afternoon, sir. My son Duakar Tiwari from Sirata Institute of Engineering and uh, Science. Sir, uh, my query is: Sir, I want to know that as a faculty member, uh, apart from your textbook companion, what else we can uh, contribute ourselves uh, for the Skylab, sir? You can contribute in lab migration. Migrate one of your labs. Sir, can you? Okay, sir. Sir, can you elaborately tell a little bit about it, sir? So I already showed that. Let's go. Um, so, for example, we saw lab migration project. In the lab migration project, you saw completed labs. These are all the things. Each of them explains a particular lab. Lots of details are there. Now, if you want to contribute, you have to see this procedure. you also want to become part of it it says procedure what is the way to do that it is explained here for faculty how do you do that you have to fill this lab migration proposal given here then if you do not have a login account you have to register there remember these are advanced things so you have to register yourself it explains how to do that okay and then procedure is given coding guidelines are given honorarium is given let me make it uh, zoom it so you can actually see what is written, coming here okay procedure coding guidelines honorarium completed labs labs in progress download codes all kinds of things are available under lab migration so this is what you have to do okay thank you and say suppose if you are going for scilab is there any some uh, letter or something like that from your side so that uh, it should be uh, we can go to the university that uh, yes we can proceed with that one the aict has already accepted uh, scilab if you visit the aict website it actually shows yes. what are the open source alternatives aict recommends that already so if aict recommends then will your university not use it you have to okay. put it up yeah okay okay thank okay. you thank you okay, thank, thank you, you. Yeah, RBS, RBS Engineering College. You have any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, good please go good ahead. Good evening, sir. Like to ask, sir, question: What is the difference between MATLAB and the 
Silev. Basically, uh, MATLAB is widely used inside the PSD and research work. So how we can use uh, Scilab instead of MATLAB? So whatever you can do using MATLAB, you can do with Scilab. MATLAB costs a lot of money, Scilab is free. Scilab is free, yeah. you don't have to pay. MATLAB costs a lot of money, that is the difference. But uh, there is, will be the difference between uh, tools basically. If we are using the MATLAB tools, then uh, it will provide a lot of facilities to the scholar instead of a Scilab. Yeah, remember the… There are uh, such type of things. Remember, remember the 65,000 examples that I presented, Scilab code, it is not available in any other software. You want to set a question to your students, for every one of the solved problems in your book, I have it in Scilab, it is not available in any other software and it is free. You can use it on your uh, mobile phone, you can use it on your tablet, right, it is free. Remember. Uh, academic cost of proprietary software is 1 percent. Just to give an example, if you say that it costs X amount of money to buy some commercial software and use it in your college, your student tomorrow graduates and goes to industry, he will not have access to it because in industry the cost will be 100 times that. So what is the point in teaching him on a commercial software that he cannot use outside the college, right? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, in case uh, um, whatever we have done is uh, recorded and it is also available, and I would want you to uh, go through this. And um, if there are questions, you can get in touch with us and um, use the spoken tutorial methodology to train your students in a big way. Number one. Um, come to our Tuesday meetings for advanced level help. So, thanks a lot, uh, thanks to all of you for joining, thanks for your interest and um, uh, goodbye and Jai Hind.